Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at what could potentially be the biggest action figure that I ever review over on the channel and it is none other than the newly released Marvel Legends Haslab X-Men's The Sentinel. A piece that I know many of you, myself included, have been super excited to actually finally get their hands on ever since this figure was announced I believe in August of last year. So 13 months later we finally got The Sentinel and honestly this guy is awesome. Not completely perfect and for the price point I definitely think that he near enough should be but we'll go into more details in regards to that later on in the review as we very quickly take a look here at the packaging unlike Unicron we've got a complete colorized box which looks absolutely fantastic so you can see we've got various different sentinels such as the sentinel prime or the master mold head you've got bastion fighting off against wolverine and then as we just spin the packaging around we get yet another fantastic piece of artwork of the Sentinel facing off against Cyclops and various other X-Men. Now, much like Unicron, this piece is enormous, so I shall try my utmost best to show this guy off in as much detail as I possibly can. So without further ado, let's bring some of the accessories in and take a closer look at them before, of course, we take a look at the big guy himself. So taking a look here at accessories to begin with, we'll take a look at the Bastion figure. This, of course, also comes with an alternate male prime head. The detail on this is actually really, really impressive. You can see how we've got quite a pale face there, but the Scott work looks fantastic a really nice piercing purple paint app used there for the eyes and of course the entire helmet section has been painted in a very similar color to the actual sentinel itself so this is completely picked out in a super awesome metallic purple and then as we actually take a look here at bastion himself sadly they don't include the display bases i'm merely using them just as they'd more than likely topple over here on this particular surface but the attention to detail for the face sculpt i think looks absolutely fantastic you can see really really awesome hair texture going on i love the wash that they've applied to this in order to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt spinning around here to the back you can see that purple metallic paint used for this part of the armor and i absolutely love the cybernetic jaw as well as neck that we've got going on as well the attention to detail really does look fantastic you can see there for that side cheek piece super super awesome and then of course we've got this bearded section which protrudes from the front and we've got this super awesome mechanical mouth section as well all of which has been painted and sculpted impeccably well as we just take a look here towards the body it's fairly basic in terms of design but we have got some nice golden highlights going on of course you can see some of the musculature detailing underneath this particular armor piece and then as we just turn to the side you can once again see more of that musculature detailing all of which looks fantastic sadly this is not a pinless body and the same also applies for the female prime but nevertheless i think that in regards to a standalone figure this is really really nicely done you can also see the attention to detail going on here for the thighs looks super super awesome and then of course as we just take a look here down to the lower section we've got a very angular design going on for the foot but in all just a super super awesome looking figure now getting down to articulation the head here is on a ball joint so this can look left to right and we also have got a hinge joint at the neck allowing this to look down i'd say roughly to about that far and then up to about that far so definitely quite a good range of motion going on there we merely just get a rotation as well as a hinge joint here at the shoulder so no form of butterfly joint we do get a full rotation there at the bicep double jointed elbows full wrist rotation as well as a hinge joint which can hinge out to the sides we do in fact get an ab crunch going forwards backwards as well as a waist joint which can rotate the full 360 the legs can kick forwards that far back to about that far before they're restricted by this behind piece they can also do the splits slightly sadly not to the best degree but nevertheless we do get a full rotation here at the thigh double jointed knees which can kick way past 90 which once again is really really impressive and then finally here for the lower section we also do get a shin cut which can rotate the full 360 and the foot can of course pivot forwards backwards as well as rock side to side so overall a pretty decent amount of articulation definitely nothing mind-blowing and i maybe would have liked to have seen butterfly joints as well as perhaps a ball joint going on here for the diaphragm but other than that it's a very very impressive looking figure and just to show you how that alternate male prime head looks actually inserted onto the body you can see there really really impressive stuff and then of course we take a look here at the female prime now this figure is actually really really cool i wasn't all that excited for this but in hand it's definitely turned out a lot better than i was expecting so you can see much like the male prime head we do in fact get a really nice skin tone going on of course we've got that metallic purple going around the side of the head and then as we just take a look here towards the detail as well as skull work going on for the hair this looks incredibly impressive i think the wash has turned out super super nicely it perfectly highlights some of those details that may have gone missed if they had decided to just cast this out of one piece and of course much like bastion we've got a really nice mechanical detailing going on here for the actual neck section all of which has been picked out with a really awesome gun metal going all the way around here to the back of the head so we've even got what appears to be some spinal detailing there which looks fantastic we've got this purple metallic section here for the top you can see here considering we're using a female body just single joints here at the elbows it would have been so so awesome to have actually gotten double jointed elbows for this figure but nevertheless it is nice to see that these are indeed pinless and then as we just take a look here down to the lower section of course it's just a very sleek black design but definitely really really nice and i'm glad that they did decide to include this of course articulation wise we do get a ball joint here 
at the head, as well as a hinge joint, which can look up and down, down to a fantastic degree, I may add. We can also rotate the arms the full 360, hinge out to the side, no butterfly joints, sadly. Full rotation at the elbow, sadly, once again, only single joints. Full rotation here at the wrist, hinge joint out to the sides. Then we do get a ball joint here at the upper diaphragm, which can rotate all the way around, as well as, of course, crunch forwards and backwards slightly. The legs can kick forwards that far, back to that far, out to the sides, rotation here at the thigh double jointed knees which can bend actually a little better than bastion and then finally here for the foot this can of course pivot forward backwards as well as rock side to side so definitely pretty decent articulation and once again is a really nice piece to actually display alongside the sentinel itself and then we turn to some accessories which actually integrate to the main sentinel figure itself so if we just take a look at these of course we do get included one battle damaged hand which actually has turned out a lot better than i was expecting sadly however it is non-articulated so you can't actually ratchet the farm or rotate this around or any of the fingers but in regards to attention to detail i think the metallic blue paint they've used has turned out super super nicely you can see here this section which is all busted up the fingers have been completely shredded we've got all of these different mechanical components sticking out looking as if though they've been completely wrecked and then as we just take a look here towards this actual joint that will connect onto the figure so much mechanical detailing all of this circuitry as well as wiring detail and then just spinning around here to the back of the hand you can once again see an awesome metallic blue paint applied as well as some awesome looking sculpt work but i'll show you the integration of this later on in the review we also so in order to accompany the battle damaged hand get included one battle damaged face now this is actually one of my preferred face sculpts i think the attention to detail on this really is awesome you can see there that smashed up eye with this burnt and singed effect going around the side this is in fact completely blacked out so when we insert it onto the figure only one eye illuminates which i actually think is a super nice touch you can see here some claw marks of course probably created by wolverine with some silver metallic detail you can see here for this crest section completely busted up full of dents as well as cracks all the way around and you can see this super super awesome metallic purple paint honestly it looks absolutely fantastic here at the top of the head you can once again see some of that inner working so some mechanical as well as circuitry detailing going on we've got this wire sticking out here to the water to the top some nice silver paint just to give you the impression that of course this is completely busted up and then as we just take a look here to the lower section of the face plate you can see how he's literally missing his lower jaw you've got all of these different wires sticking out from the back and then this side for the most part is actually pretty intact we've got some dings and dents there on the side and then as we actually just take a look towards the interior you can see some circuitry detail which is an area which they actually didn't have to sculpt so that is definitely a nice touch but my favorite head sculpt out of them all is of course the sentinel prime or the master mold head this looks absolutely fantastic and will no doubt be how i'll be displaying my sentinel in the collection this looks awesome not to mention it's incredibly weighty which is actually an area which i have a little bit of a critique with but we'll discuss that later on when we of course cover articulation you can see in regards to the face plate really amazing metallic silver used here i think the attention to detail going on for the eyes looks fantastic you can see circuitry and well as wiring detailing the definition here to the mouth as well as some of these detailings going on for the side cheeks looks fantastic here for the main helmet design you can see super nice metallic blue highlights as well as that purple paint and all the way throughout the figure we've got these huge bulbous sections which have been picked out in silver and of course here towards the back we've still got that blue detailing all of which i just think looks fantastic and inside much like the battle damaged head we've got all of this different circuitry as well as wiring detail and you can see the two cutouts which will in fact help aid the electronic function and then we turn to the final additional head sculpt that being the tri-sentinel head now this personally when it was announced i actually wasn't all that impressed i thought you know it was just a throwaway accessory but actually getting it in hand is a pretty decent accessory and really does create for quite a cool and interesting alternative look so here for this section you can see what appears to be what I at least believe to be almost laser cannons actually embedded within the mouth. I could be completely mistaken, but that's definitely what these appear to be. I think the paintwork on these looks fantastic. It does appear as if though they have used that 3D printing technology for this particular region, but I think it looks awesome. Of course, as we spin around here to the side, we've got this golden detailing and here for this face, it's painted in silver and you can see all of those intricate detailings here for the mouth, such as once again, more circuitry as well as wiring detailing. And then finally wrapping up for accessories, we do get included a pair of bendy wire tentacles. Now, these are super awesome. When you actually get the Sentinel posed with other Marvel Legends figures, these look so, so awesome. You can see, in regards to sculpt work, we've got all of these various different panel lines. And of course, they're fully extendable. So you can really pose these around in whatever way you so desire, wrap them around any figure you want. And they really do look fantastic when actually inserted onto the figure. So with the accessories completely covered, of course, let's bring the Sentinel out itself and take a closer look at how awesome that figure has in fact actually turned out. Now, turning to the Sentinel itself, this figure here is undoubtedly an absolute showstopper. It looks 
looks incredible. The attention to detail, the paintwork, just the overall design of this guy looks remarkable. However, in regards to articulation, and I would say the way the figure's actually been designed is a complete mess, especially for a 350 pound figure. And in some countries plus, honestly, the articulation on this figure is so, so poor that this is why I've got him in a rather standard vanilla pose. And it's all simply down to the fact that they have not engineered, or at least it doesn't appear as if though they've engineered any form of ratcheting joint. This guy has literally been engineered, I would say, almost the exact same as you would expect from a standard six inch figure, which just is not on at all, especially considering how large and expensive this guy is. Honestly, there's been multiple occasions where I've literally just left the room and this figure has toppled over. And for those of you who are planning to display him higher up on a shelf, honestly, it's just a catastrophe waiting to happen. So if you do get this guy and your knees are loose, then I would definitely recommend to keep him on the ground or unfortunately try and prop him up with some form of display base as honestly, he's definitely an accident waiting to happen, which honestly is just this guy's major downfall. If this guy had heavy duty ratchet joints, like we've seen from Haslab Unicron or even they're significantly cheaper in comparison to this Titan class figures, then this guy would have been an all round fantastic release. But overall, it is definitely the design of some of those joints, which are ultimately pulling this guy down as I'm just super, super disappointed when I got this out of the packaging and of course actually removed all of the styrofoam and whatnot, the legs literally just flopped. And honestly, I stood there in sheer disappointment as I had been super excited to actually get this guy to display him with some of the other figures that I own in my collection. But as it stands, he's more or less just going to be stuck in this rather generic statue position. And that is really not what I was hoping for him. But I'm sorry to start this off with a negative note. It's just I had to get my major critique over and done with. Of course, we'll discuss some of the looseness of the joints in just a second. But let's actually bring him in for a closer look and take a look at what is fantastic, that being the detail. So in addition to the three head sculpts that I took a look at previously, of course, we do get included the more traditional look for the Sentinel. And much like those sculpts, this looks absolutely fantastic. Honestly, the attention to detail for these is remarkable. You can see the intricate circuitry detailing that we've got going on for the side of the cheek, even the red highlight just to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. And we've also got this mesh detailing actually underneath where this silver grill piece is. And you can see that really nice almost flesh tone that they've used for the main faceplate. Much like those previous sculpts, the entire top section of the head as well as the jaw has been completely picked out in this super awesome metallic purple. And overall, I just think it looks awesome. As we take a look here towards this side, unlike the previous side, we've now got a yellow wire which I just think is super, super impressive. Now, whilst we're actually touching base with the head sculpts, of course, we might as well go over the LED electronic function. Now, this guy will require two AAA batteries, which do not come included with this figure, and they do insert into the back. So if I just spin him around here, you can see, once again, fantastic looking detailing, as well as, once again, that really awesome, very deep blue slash purple metallic paint. But you are going to want to pop off this back section here, which will then reveal the battery cover. And of course, you just unscrew this, insert the batteries, and the Sentinel's electronic function will be good to go. And then you just snap that back onto place, spin him around, and then push this circular section here in the chest. And once you do that, you can see how it will begin to pulsate this almost purplish color, and then we'll proceed to go into an almost yellow color. Then if you press it again, you can see how it will then begin to change. And this time we'll go into a very deep piercing green, which I think looks fantastic. You can see also this reactor piece will also light up green. And then if you push it a third time, we'll once again get a different color, the super awesome, really, really menacing looking piercing red. Once again, that reactor lighting up red as well as the eyes. And then if you also actually hold this here, for a couple of seconds, you can see how it will begin to glitch. So the actual face sculpt itself here for the eyes will begin to glitch various different colors. The eyes will then turn off and the reactor itself will stay on for a couple of seconds before it then begins to glitch. And then of course, slowly fades out. Now, issues that I have with this particular feature are to do with some of the different head sculpts. So sadly, when you do push this and of course have the eyes illuminated and you do actually begin to articulate the face, you will notice that the actual eyes themselves will cut out. So for example, this one here has gone completely out. And then if I just rotate this one here to the side, you can see how this one has also gone out. And that's because you're actually rotating at the ball joint and not the neck itself. So if I just pop this off, which you'll have to do anyway to swap some of the heads, you can see that it is merely just this front section here, which illuminates with the lights. Now, personally, I wish this this entire dome was just a complete LED. If they had put the LEDs in the center and made this completely clear, that would have been awesome. I really have no idea as to why they've done that. Maybe because you're dealing with transparent plastic when you pop the heads on, it could have potentially actually caused this to crack and break, but I'm sure there was a better way of doing this. If we bring in the likes of say, the Sentinel Prime head and snap this here on, because it is a much tighter grip to the actual ball joint, when you push this on, it doesn't so much actually rotate at the actual head, it rotates the full neck, meaning that no matter what way you have this posed, the eyes will stay illuminated all the time, which is really what I wish we could have seen for the other heads. So that once again is slightly unfortunate. Of course, now we've got the prime head on, I might as well show you 
how that looks in its entirety. Once again, such a fantastic looking sculpt. Really, really looks awesome. We'll very quickly show it off with the red LED. So you can see there, super, super impressive. Really, really menacing. Here's what it looks like with the battle damage head. Now, seeing as we're only dealing with one, once again, fantastic. But as you turn here to the side, if you're not actually manipulating the neck, the eye will begin to fade and cut out, which is slightly unfortunate. And then finally, here it is with that Tri-Sentinel head. Now this actually looks fantastic, but sadly, considering it's only the front section that illuminates, if we just turn here to the side, you can see that all of the other faces will in fact be completely dead. And that is another area which I wish they could have improved upon. Maybe if they could have found a way to have actually made that transparent section in the center incredibly durable and actually had all of the eyes illuminating, that would have been awesome. But I guess it's not much of an issue, especially if you're just keeping this guy for display. But of course, if you just want to manipulate him and play around with him, of course you do run the risk especially if you're using some of those smaller heads and not the master mold of one of the eyes actually blacking out but super cool integration with these heads very simplistic to do and I think all of them look really really impressive but moving on to other parts of the sentinel you can see in regards to detail as well as paint and sculpt work I think this all looks absolutely incredible especially where this chest unit is concerned now if I had any critiques with the accessories it's that it would have been awesome to have actually gotten an interchangeable battle damage chest unit that would have been super super cool but as it stands I think the attention to detail that actually goes on for this piece looks super super awesome you can see really nice looking mechanical detailing going on here for the armpit region all of which has been picked out with this super awesome gunmetal silver you can see here for the biceps completely painted in metallic purple and then of course we've also got some nice metallic blue or purple i guess you could say here for the gauntlet sections as well as some really nice looking circuitry as well as paint detailing going on for the various different tubes and wires that connect the wrists to the forearms and the attention to detail for the hands themselves also looks fantastic we'll touch base more with this when we actually insert some of the tentacle accessories but just with a clenched fist honestly super super nice and then as we just move here back to the main section of the sentinel you can see the abs there looking fantastic once again more of that circuitry as well as wiring detailing with some being picked out with yellow and blue and then as we just flip here to this side you can once again see some more paint as well as purple highlights and then moving down to the lower section we've once again got more circuitry detailing which i'm all for i'm a massive fan of this i think this looks absolutely fantastic going on for these hips super super impressive here for the thighs you can see very thick pads but all of which have been painted and you can see some nice gunmetal silver highlights just picking out some of the sharp details of the sculpt as well as here for these knees and as we just flip to this side once again super super impressive inside as well you can also see a great attention to detail as well as paintwork i've got some of those screw covers there which also have been sculpted really really nicely and then finally, as we just bring ourselves down to the lower section of the figure, you can once again see mesmerizing sculpt work as well as overall colorization. Honestly, the figure looks absolutely incredible. It's just a shame that when we do get down to articulation, you'll really begin to see some of the flaws, which ultimately are detracting major points from this. Honestly, if the joints were reinforced with ratchets, I'd literally have no issues with this guy at all. I think that in regards to detail and sculpt work, he looks fantastic. So let's very quickly spin him to the back, take a look at some of that sculpt work, and then proceed on to the articulation. So taking a look at the detail from the back, as you would expect, it's almost just as good as the front. You can see for the neck region, once again, so much circuitry detailing as well as what appears to be this almost spinal detailing. And of course, we've got that huge pad which we'll have to detach in order to insert the batteries, all of which has been either painted or cast in this super awesome purple slash blue metallic paint. Honestly, looks fantastic. You can see some really nice looking wiring detailing underneath the shoulder pad. Once again, nice looking skull work going on here for the back of the elbows. Uh, much like the front, you can see some of that spinal detailing as well as extraordinary skull work for these tubes and wires. That just looks so, so awesome. By far, one of my favorite aspects of this particular figure. And then as we just take a look here, down to the lower section, the wiring as well as the paintwork all continues just looking super, super impressive. The knee joints as well have also been sculpted and cast out of a slightly different color of plastic when in comparison to the paint that we've got going on for the thighs. So would have been nice if maybe they could have painted them. I imagine paint rub probably would have occurred and maybe that would have looked more unsightly than this does. To be fair, it is under incredibly harsh lighting and under standard light, you probably wouldn't really be able to notice it, but it's definitely just something worth mentioning. And then as we take a look here, once again, to the back of the legs, you can see so many different layers as well as once again, really robust looking armor for this guy, as well as some nice gunmetal highlights just to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. And something also which is worth mentioning is that if you do decide to look at the feet of the Sentinel, these two have also been completely sculpted as well as painted where these repulsive blasts are concerned, or I guess you could call them fire blasts for when the Sentinel, of course, does go into flight. But really, really impressive, fantastic attention to detail as well as paint across the board for the entire figure, including the accessories. And whilst on the topic of accessories, let's very quickly wrap them up. So here for the hand, as mentioned when I was taking a look at the details, 
detailed. Honestly, the sculpt and paintwork for these look fantastic. Now, an area which I do have a critique with is that I would have loved for these to have actually illuminated. I don't think that it would have been all that difficult to actually do. And considering this guy costs 350 pounds, I'm definitely certain that they could have found some way in order to actually illuminate these blasts here on either side, especially considering that the actual box art does show the Sentinel with these illuminated. But nevertheless, as I very quickly take a look here at some of these bendy wires that we've got going on for the tentacles, these insert really easily. So you simply just peg them in. And of course, you can manipulate these to whatever way you so desire. They look fantastic, especially if you get this guy posed. But once again, posing is going to be an issue seeing as the joints are not the best. And then finally, for accessories, of course, we do get the interchangeable battle damage hands just to show you how that inserts. You simply just want to slide off this wrist and then we can take this hand here, insert that there into the joint. And there you've got the battle damage hand fully inserted onto the figure. And of course, if you slap the battle damage head on, you've got a more or less fully battle damage look for your Sentinel. But it would have been awesome if we could have gotten a few interchangeable components, such as a chest piece, maybe a shoulder pad or some damage going on for the thighs or the gauntlets. But nevertheless, it's still a really, really nice look for this guy. So turning to articulation, a topic which I've mentioned so much throughout this review, and it's just about time that we get it over and done with. So for the head, if you've got the master mold head actually inserted, we get the best range of motion that you're going to get across the board. So the actual head can look up to a pretty decent range of motion and then of course can look down the neck joint will also rotate left to right as well as the ball joint that we've actually got going on for the head but if you do decide to swap it out for the more generic look of the sentinel sadly you're going to get a minimal amount looking up honestly it literally cannot look up at all which is going to make some of those flight poses that maybe you wish to get this guy in pretty much impossible this guy cannot look up at all if i just turn him to the side you can see it can look down slightly it can tilt barely honestly it's literally non-existent but it cannot look up at all which is once again super unfortunate 300 50 pounds you would have thought they would have found a way to make this guy sort of stand out from some of the rest of the figures in regards to articulation so that definitely is a little disappointing in my opinion then we turn to the torso articulation once again honestly not all that impressive so we do get a rotation here at the upper diaphragm this can rotate left to right incredibly stiff and sturdy which actually isn't a bad thing that does also allow it to rock side to side slightly as well as arch forwards and backwards although it's mainly depending here on this actual ab crunch so this can crunch back i would say to that far honestly you're not going to get all that much range out of this and it can crunch barely forwards but considering how top heavy he is and how weak those knee joints are honestly you're not really going to want to punch him forwards all that far but it would have been good if we could have gotten a better range of motion as we turn here to the arms luckily the shoulder pad is in fact actually connected to the bicep so that allows the shoulder pad to actually rotate along with the arm which is fantastic so you can see these can rotate the full 360 if you wanted to we also do get a rotation here at the bicep on a very soft ratchet joint and supposedly we do indeed get a double joint here at the elbow although due to the nature of the design this can only bend i'd say slightly past 90 maybe 92 degrees honestly definitely not the best wish that maybe these panels could have shifted up in order to allow for a better curl 350 pounds one of the biggest marvel legend figures they've ever produced you would have thought this would have had a much better range of motion when in comparison to some of the other six inch figures and then we turn here to the hand now this can pivot forwards and backwards so you are able to actually arch the hand back to a pretty decent range and the fingers are fully articulated to quite a surprising extent so we do get a hinge joint here at the actual thumb which can hinge forwards and backwards we've also got that ratchet joint ratchet joint at the tip rotation here at the finger ratchet joint forwards and backwards ratchet joint at the knuckle and ratchet joint at the tip so pretty decent where that's concerned i honestly cannot fault that at all and then we turn to the legs now these to be completely honest are an absolute shit show for a figure which costs 350 pounds these 100 should have been reinforced with ratchet joints i have no idea as to why they're not perhaps the ratchets are just not showing up here for my particular figure it could potentially be a qc issue but personally i've seen so many loose joints online that i really do think that this is ultimately just a design flaw and i really have no idea how this was actually able to be approved but just to demonstrate what i'm talking about here for the actual hips these can hinge all the way forward i'd say roughly to 90 and for the most part that joint is actually very very stiff i can't complain all that much in regards to the forward motion of the hips it can also hinge back i would say roughly to about that far which once again is pretty decent if we just angle the arm out to the sides you are also able to get this guy doing the splits but seeing as there's no ratchet it's just going to droop down once again not reinforced by anything it's merely just a normal buttery joint which is just super super unfortunate not even a stiff buttery joint either which is just such a shame and i do also know there is a fix out there for joints such as this as well as the knees where you can in fact actually tighten the screw but that's just a temporary fix over time it's still going to become loose and the more and more you begin to tighten that screw up and it becomes loose it's eventually just going to be a problem which you cannot rectify at all and then we turn to the infamous knees themselves so if i just spin him around here to the side 
We do in fact get a double joint here, which can bend slightly past 90, but you can see how this one here just continuously wants to droop down. Literally, there is nothing holding that up at all, which is just such a shame. All the same also applies here for this side. So if I just bring this to the back, you can see how this two also wants to continuously droop down. I'm actually going to bring out a comparison of a figure which is actually created by Hasbro. It isn't all that much shorter than this guy and is in fact less than half the price of this, but I'll do that towards the end of the articulation segment. Here for the foot, this can pivot forwards and backwards. Sadly, the ankle rocker pivot on this is to a bare minimum. It literally cannot really rock in and out due to the nature of the design. And for whatever reason, this pad here can hinge up and down so in regards to the lower leg articulation this figure in my opinion is a massive massive letdown and for said comparison here we've got the earthrise titan class scorponok now of course this doesn't weigh nor is as big as the sentinel but honestly it's not that much smaller and if we just tip this figure up all of the joints are completely reinforced with ratchets i can give this a proper shake and none of those leg joints are going anywhere how can they implement ratchet joints into this figure which is in fact a mass-produced figure that you can pick up at retail and not a haslab exclusive honestly it's just absolutely beyond me it has made the playability of the haslab sentinel pretty much non-existent unless you try your absolute best to position him in a way where he's never going to topple over he's literally just going to be a statue piece and if i wanted a statue piece i would have bought one and not a fully articulated action figure honestly super super let down and it's something that i really hope hasbro themselves can in fact address as you cannot back a figure almost 13 months in advance to receive something which is mediocre at best in terms of quality and there's no real way to refund you or there's no real way to exchange it for something else i just think that in regards to this it's an issue which needs to be addressed much like haslab unicron where the final product of course had the blue mouth instead of the yellow but that was nowhere near as much of an issue in my opinion as what we've got going on with the sentinel where that figure can literally not stand up at all so turning to some size comparisons here we've got the haslab Lab Sentinel compared next to the Transformers Titan class Earthrise Scorponok. Now, of course, Scorponok is a little shorter when in comparison to this guy, but the one thing I really want to push to you guys is that Scorponok is a mass produced figure. You do not have to back him at all. You can literally go out to store shelves, and if he's available, you can pick him up. So, if this mass produced figure, which retails for £160 and is considerably lighter than Haslab Sentinel, has proper heavy duty ratchet joints engineered into his hips as well as his knees, why does the Sentinel not? I just do not understand that at all. The Ratchet joints should be as strong, if not stronger, than this Titan Scorponok, and really is something that I just wish they would have done before they hit the approve button and put this guy into production. And here for some Marvel Legends comparisons, we've got the Sentinel compared next to the Hulkbuster, Iron Monger, as well as the two figures that come included. And you can see that no doubt the figure is an absolute showstopper. It towers above every single Marvel Legends figure that has so far ever been produced, with Galactus coming around sometime next year. And with this guy's release, that is something which I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have been so eager to actually back Galactus as if the joints are as bad as they are here for the Sentinel then that figure is definitely going to be once again another major disappointment. So some final thoughts for the Marvel Legends Haslab X-Men's The Sentinel. Overall the figure looks awesome. I honestly cannot fault it in regards to paint apps as well as detail. They've done a smashing job. This is by far one of the best Sentinels that have ever been produced. It is the best Sentinel ever produced. It looks remarkable and it has a fantastic presence due to its enormous scale and of course the high level of detail that they were able to achieve with this piece. I also think the accessories that he includes are all great the bendy wiring the tentacles the variety of different head sculpts that we've got for him and both the male and female primes are also a great inclusion to actually get with this set and are really nice figures on their own i do think the led function also is very impressive i think the way it works is simple yet very effective i like how you can switch between a variety of different colors and of course actually get that almost battle damage flickering effect going on towards the end depending on how you actually wish to display this guy and inserting and removing the batteries is also incredibly easy then we turn to articulation as an actual action figure itself i don't think that this guy is as articulated as I was expecting. The fact that the head cannot look all the way up is a major disappointment in my opinion. The fact that you cannot bend those elbows pretty much past 90 degrees once again is a disappointment and I also don't think that we've got the greatest range of motion actually going on for the ab crunch. It would have been great if they also could have found a way to maybe extend the shoulders so that we could have gotten some form of butterfly rotation. As it stands this guy is more or less very similar to what you would expect from a standard six inch figure in regards to how he can actually move. But then we turn to either the design or the QC of this guy depending on what you guys really wish to put it down to in regards to the tolerances of the legs. The legs are just atrocious. The knee joints are absolutely abysmal for a £350 figure. That is something that should not have been allowed to leave the factory until it was an issue that was rectified. 
you literally cannot pose this guy. I've tried to put him in pretty much all of the same poses that were suggested when this guy was first announced by Hasbro on their site, such as the walking pose and a few different more dynamic poses. And it's pretty much impossible without this guy toppling over within 10 seconds of actually having him standing. So that once again is such a shame. It's a mere effort to actually get him in a static vanilla pose, let alone anything dynamic unless you try your best to get him in a crouching pose. So once again, really, really let down by the actual tolerance of the knee joints. For the most part, the other joints seem to be pretty adequate. I wish the hip joint going out to the side was on a ratchet joint, but honestly, it's neither here or there. It is what it is at the end of the day, and it's an issue which I really hope that Hasbro at least address, let alone rectify. I would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this particular figure. Do you guys agree with my thoughts on this? Do you think that maybe I'm being too harsh? At the end of the day, we did back this 13 months ago. We were expecting something incredibly high-end. This guy is £350, so definitely a premium product, and I do not think that I'm getting a premium result in regards to how he actually articulates and poses when in comparison to the likes of a 3-0 item or, of course, a figure from Hot Toys. So be sure to let me know down in the comment section below what you think of this review, what you guys think of my thoughts, and, of course, what you guys think of the figure. Is it worth the wait? Are you guys looking forward to Galactus? Or, like me, are you a little more skeptical on how that final figure will, in fact, turn out? I thank you all for watching, and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.